I recently had the privilege of meeting with Dave McLeod. For those of you that don't know who Dave is, he's a very talented professional climber. He's been climbing for 27 years. He's climbed eight sea boulders, nine A sport climbs, E11 trad, 12, wh whatever that is, and eight B plus free solo. So obviously Dave is a very experienced and gifted climber, but it's not just his climbing that makes him special. He has an undergraduate degree in sports science and physiology and a master of science in sports and exercise science and another master of science in human nutrition. So I figured with Dave's climbing expertise along with his credentials in human nutrition and, or what, whatever you call it, the best thing to do would be for Dave to rank some of the most common sport nutrition supplements in a tier list to find out which ones will help you in your rock climbing and which ones are big, big phony scam. Let's get right into it. First supplement for you to rank, whey protein. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I take whey every single rock climbing session. I've been under the impression for a long time that whey protein is like the gold, as it says, the gold standard when it comes to uh, protein. So I was curious, like if you if you think like, do climbers should climbers be taking whey protein? Is there a better way to get protein? Is whey protein S tier? Is it F tier? Is it garbage? Um, yeah, whey protein is an excellent uh, supplement if you need it. And that's the same with most supplements. Um, I mean, it, there's, the list of supplements that I take is very, very small. I'm sure we'll get into that in a, in a moment. But whey is actually not one of them myself because I generally consume plenty of protein in normal food. I would definitely supplement with whey if I either didn't consume enough total protein in my diet or if the quality of the protein in my diet wasn't very high. It's just a, a good source of protein. It has a good balance and spectrum of, of amino acids, including the, the key ones for muscle growth. So in my case, I don't take it because I usually eat about, let's say, 120 to 150 grams of protein a day just in my normal Oh, really? Food. Oh, that's yeah. a lot, I feel like. Yes. At least from my perspective. Yeah, I, 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 can, I find it hard to even eat that much, like get enough food to get that much protein like because mm -hmm. i eat a lot of carbs right so i eat a lot of like bread mm -hmm. and then i'm full and then i just drink yeah. away because i'm like oh, i didn't get any protein yeah yeah so if you're eating like any food whether it's carb rich or fat rich food which is energy dense and not very protein dense then a supplemental whey is a, is a great idea so it sounds like for you supplementing whey is actually quite a good idea. I mean, the, the average consumption of uh, wheat flour worldwide is something crazy like 800 calories a day of, uh, of wheat as, as the global average, which is just mind. I remember reading that stat and thinking, I, I don't even believe that. That seems awful high. I probably contribute to that stat <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> I so, eat like bagels. I have like a bagel and then a peanut butter sandwich and then butter toast like it's just bread 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 mm. i don't know i don't know if it's like an addiction or what but i <laughs> love bread so basically i guess you're saying the way is good if you need the if you're not getting enough protein but if you're getting enough protein it's just not really doing anything exactly that's the bottom line okay so what would you what would you say it is tier wise then uh i would say it's i would say it's s but um Ooh, yeah, s as i like the like, sound of that yeah it's like it's really really Really, really good. Um, but again, it's all conditional. It all depends on what else you're eating. The other great thing about it is there's no downside. If you eat a ton of protein and then you add whey on top of that, there's no downside that I know of. So have at it. If you like it, then go for it. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to start like lactating if I have too much whey protein or anything <laughs> no, like that. No. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, for me, I think... Mm -hmm. I had put whey protein in A tier, so I was pretty close. Mm, yeah. So let, let me fully understand your scale here. Like, uh, what, what? S tier is like, there's, not, there's nothing better for yeah, what yeah. it does. I think, I, we'll get to it, but I think there's something better than, what, than whey protein for uh, what it does. Yeah, okay. All right, second uh, on the tier list is plant protein. Plant protein, okay. Well, um, plant protein is another one that's conditional. So pr plant protein in the way that you've shown it, which is powdered in a box or a bag, um, yeah. would, would probably, if it's a blended protein, would probably sit right up beside whey. Oh, wow. 
But if you eat the whole potato, <laughs> then it's a different matter because plant protein, when it's bound up in the, the food matrix of a whole plant, um, is not absorbed, is not digested or absorbed quite as well. So there's lots really? of yeah, there's lots of studies that have come out in the past few years comparing uh, plant protein versus animal protein and showing that they're they, as long as you surpass a threshold of intake, they're basically equivalent. But all those studies are done with protein in the powdered form, which is very important. So it's not quite the same as if, if you're eating that in the whole food. So. In the form that you've shown That's it. so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Does, it's like almost, I mean, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense at the same time. So basically the, the powder protein is actually better than, for the protein source itself, than eating the actual vegetable. Yeah. But then I'm assuming you miss out on basically all the nutrients of the vegetable if you're, because they probably don't have that in the, right, yeah, the protein ex powder. Exactly, exactly. Above either the, the whey protein or the plant protein powder, I would still put uh, eggs, beef, and liver <laughs> oh, <laughs> as, yeah? the, as the ultimate diet supplements. They are the best supplements that you can have with your diet. To you, assuming that this is a blended plant protein, you would put this up in S tier with whey? Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. All right. That's, uh, I did not expect that. That's actually interesting to hear. I thought you were <laughs> going to be like, ugh, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's... Uh, I could, I could, we could drag it down slightly d depending on, <gasps> so, so far we've just talked about the nutritional properties of it, but there's also other things to consider such as um, the environmental concerns. Most of a pea is not made of protein. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you extract the protein out of it, then not only have you wasted most of the pea, but you've wasted most of the plant. So you've got to grow. Oh, yeah. You've got to grow a lot of plant protein that makes up the whole rest of the plant, all of the roots and the stalk and all of that, and that all, all becomes discarded. You'd have to think of the whole pea plant and like what happened to that pea plant. I mean, probably the rest of it went into went into animal feed. So if if you're buying the plant protein because you don't like you know eating animal foods or contributing to the animal food industry, <laughs> then yeah. Maybe you would have to drag pea protein or plant protein down a little bit. So I had put plant protein in B tier. So slightly below, pretty similar, I guess. But I, for my reasoning was different. Mine was more just that I didn't think it mm -hmm. had the same quality as whey. Yeah. But uh, pretty pretty similar to yeah. uh Yeah, yeah pretty similar. We're I like think. one notch off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, very close to each other there. Yeah, that's fine. Happy with that. You'll probably see why here. In a minute when we oh, get right, this. okay, cool. <laughs> so our next one is uh, collagen protein, Excellent. which I know you have some opinions on. Yeah, yeah. So where should that go? Ooh, um, <laughs> I mean, I, I think maybe it would have to go smack bang in the middle between B and C. Okay. Yeah. So as a very as, yeah as a average. protein, very average. Yeah. As a protein, it's not actually a great protein because it's very rich in, you know, glycine and proline, two of the amino acids that are, you know, very prominent in collagen. But okay. it doesn't have much of the other amino acids, so it's not a high quality protein like like the whey protein is. If the right studies are done sometime in the future, it may yet turn out that there is um, a small benefit. But I don't know. I'd I'd be skeptical that that would be the the case in people who are eating plenty of protein. So this comes back to the point which we'll just come back to again and again, which is that <laughs> if your general diet is healthy, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. <laughs> so the, just, yeah, that's going to be the general theme of the video is that you shouldn't be taking supplements really at all if you are eating a really, really good diet. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I watched your video on collagen, uh, the collagen protein. I think that was a few months ago or yeah. maybe like a month ago. I don't remember, but... Yeah, and I had some, and I just threw it in the trash. I was like, no, but. <laughs> so I had placed collagen protein in F tier, personally, because I was I took it for about an entire year, thinking that I it would make me grow a full beard, and I did not. So I said it's trash, and I don't want it. <laughs> and you didn't get stronger fingers or 
less injuries? I, I, I don't know. That's a good question. I was I was mostly focused on, on, <laughs> on this. the beard. I was like, I've heard, yeah, yeah on the beard. I was like, I drink some collagen protein. I'll look like a Viking. And uh, <laughs> no. Nah. So do you do you talk about um, like nutrition, like a lot of this type of stuff at all in your uh, your course that's coming up? Uh, no, I, nutrition is not something that I talk about. And that, so that my my course that's coming out this in in April um, is just concerned with climbing technique it's just purely <laughs> movement technique so that's a huge subject in itself to me like that's the biggest lever that you have to pull for you know climbing performance i suppose i should ask me to make a course on climbing technique in part through seeing some of my own youtube videos where i go into detail on i mean i i really love the detail of movement technique i've always enjoyed uh red pointing like hard red pointing Right from when I started climbing, I've lo- I loved the aspect of bouldering where you could take a sequence, you could see a layer of holds that just wouldn't work and some really small change would make all the difference and transform a move from being impossible to easy. I really liked that. Uh, the, You're like brains over brawn. In a way, yeah. yes. I mean, yeah. I also I also value strength as well I, and, I, and I, look, I do like training for strength and I do do it and I, and I certainly don't. I certainly would never say that strength is not important. You know, the both are really important. You need both in climbing. Yeah, of course. So in, in, in my course, I, I go through a lot of the, the main ways to move and I, I try to have some sort of structure to hang climbing technique on. Things like use of momentum, like that's that's one aspect of climbing movement technique that's it's like a, a core um part of it that you need to know like why does use of momentum actually help it reduces the amount of force that you need uh, to actually do a move and it allows you to move through a more difficult position so i go into all these different aspects um so that people have a kind of structure to think these are the basic types of movement these are the basic fundamentals that i need to know but then i do also go into more detail on each aspect of them i i just want people to both to to learn from all the things I've learned, but also to learn to really value good technique and precision movement because I think it's very very rewarding. Yeah, I'll have to check out the class. I should I should get it for free, but I don't know if I do or not. <laughs> I better. Well, hopefully, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to. Yeah, please do let me know what you what you think of it. Yeah, so it's it's out, I think the twenty fourth of April, and there is some free content that's being published. So part of it will be available for free. I think they're, they're going to put some some sections of it for free. Before we continue with the video, I just wanted to say, if you guys want to check out Dave's course, you can click the link in the description or go to altitudeclimbing.com and check out a free six-part video series of his course. Uh, try it out for free. See if you like it. I mean, this guy free soloed an AP+. Look at this. It's ridiculous. I, I think he knows what he's talking about. Anyway, let's get back to the video. This one I'm actually really curious what you'll think of. It is... Branch chain amino acids. Ah, uh, okay, uh, yes. Supplement version. Yeah, I must admit I have not followed the research super closely on BCAAs. Um, I know that there were some early studies that showed some benefit for muscle protein synthesis, and then later on there were some that showed fairly unimpressive results. Um, but these days, the the field seems to have shifted its opinion slightly in that. Um, it's better just to take a complete protein with all of the essential amino acids, not just the branch chain amino acids, uh, to optimize oh. both muscle growth and all the other good things about protein. <laughs> so you've got this expensive supplement, which is only providing you a, a small slice. That is basically like taking the branch chain amino acids out of something like whey and purifying them. But I would rather just take the whey. <laughs> so I, I would put that one quite down near the bottom, maybe... Maybe into Ooh. The, maybe into the D or or even into the F. You know, doing the between the D and the F or yeah, yeah, I would say so. Because again, it, it's not going to do you any harm. It's just it's just incomplete, you know. So that is very interesting. I had placed BCAAs as S. That's why I had uh, pushed way down. Oh, interesting. And my I... reasoning was I was under the impression that they essentially were. I guess the, 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 in layman's terms, it was whey protein without the calories. 
So I was like, oh, it's like, which really doesn't make any sense when you think of it. But I was like, you're basically getting the pre broken down of what whey protein is. So you get all the good stuff from the whey. But if you're like, I because I was a wrestler in high school. So BCAAs are like really big in wrestling because then you're not gaining any weight, but you're getting like your protein. I've never really come across that way of thinking about about protein. I mean, the the, the calories in protein are, are quite difficult to utilize. There's lots of examples of this in both the kind of, you know, bodybuilding literature, but also in the obesity literature, where if you just take anyone from the whole spectrum from obese right down to shredded bodybuilder and you feed them more protein, then they tend to get they tend to get leaner. Uh, really? Yeah. Regard you know, regardless of the the type of protein really. The next one then is uh, another interesting one I'd be curious to see what you think of human growth hormone ah okay yeah um, <laughs> um, I think that would probably have to be a pass for me on that it's not something that I've oh. put a lot of research into um, and I'm always I'm always very cautious to um, to speak about any of these things without having familiarized myself recently with the the research. I don't, I don't know. Is there any research about it? Its use in rock climbing, or if it would. Not, not to my knowledge. No, I've never seen any. Um, and I mean, I, I, I suppose what you're getting at is that um, the added added body mass or muscle mass or total body mass. Is that yeah, what you're? Yeah, it would be a benefit. Oh, I was just curious because you know, obviously, in most sports, it's cheating, right? Because <laughs> it's yeah. very helpful. But in climbing, it's like, would it even be? more of a help or would it be more of a yeah yeah a detriment i guess i i mean i know it's 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 strange for me because like i've always had my my mindset of thinking about sport training nutrition in terms of like the classic sports where all of these um <laughs> injected ergogenic aids are are illegal in competitive sports i just they're just off yeah. my radar. I just don't even think about them or consider them. However, I have to realize that so much of the body bodybuilding community, this stuff is normal. Like they're, you know, yeah, that's crazy. I just people. learned about that. Like it's been on YouTube a lot now. People are talking about how just everyone takes it, which seems odd, mostly because I mean, this might be like a naive point of view, but I always see it as like just really, really bad. Like you should never be taking steroids. You know, or anything like that, or at least that's how I kind of grew up with in the sports world and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, uh, interesting. Yeah, and that's partly why I'm not super familiar with the with the research on it. That you know the long the long term implications of it. So that would be one of the first things I would I would look for. I had placed HGH <laughs> in S tier. <laughs> I was thinking like. Barry Bonds, I don't know if you know uh, Barry Bonds, a baseball player, but he was on steroids, just broke the home run record. And I was like, imagine Tomoa on HGH. Tom yeah, <laughs> but I'm also, th I'm also thinking about these people when they're, uh, when they're 50 or 60. I want them to still be going well at that time and, and you know, not having all sorts of associated problems that come along with. You care about that, the athletes. Yes, absolutely, yeah. That, yes. That's I care about the performance. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, the next one, uh, I think you might be doing a video on or something. So if that's the case, we can skip it. But I'd be, I'm so excited to see what you think about <laughs> athletic <laughs> greens. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was coming. Yes, I, um, I am going to do a video on, on that. Um, but I, I'm happy to uh, give you the, the, the summary of it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't peek. I don't think it's a great supplement overall. So the way I framed my video slightly provocatively was to think, what's <laughs> what's the most common vitamin or mineral deficiency in the world? And it's iron. And uh -huh. how much iron does AG1 contain? None. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> and, and what's the second most common deficiency um, in many countries, uh, certainly in my country and um, lots of others around the world is vitamin D. How much vitamin D is in AG1? None. <laughs> oh my God. So it You're has. Tearing it apart. <laughs> <laughs> so it has a good range of vitamin, vitamins and minerals, and it prob 
Like, it probably won't do you any harm. It's like a multivitamin and multimineral. And then there's all of the green superfoods like spirulina and chlorella and uh, also the probiotics that are that are in it. I've um, never heard of either of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, with that aspect of it, the doses that are that are in the the product, at least at, you know the amount you would take on a daily basis, are almost certainly too small to have any meaningful effect. So I really don't think I I, I would take a a lot of convincing to think that um, they would make any difference. But the vitamins and minerals, I mean, you can you can buy a vitamin and mineral multivitamin supplement for <laughs> literally a hundredth of the, yeah. the price, you know? Yeah, it's very pricey for, for what it is. It's not very good. Either. At least yeah. that, that's my... I've heard some people say they like it. I did a uh, a sponsor for it like over a year ago yeah. and uh, I drank it on the thing and people saw that I was like wincing while I was <laughs> <laughs> drinking. I was like, you should try AG1. I was like, <laughs> it's just pretty bad. So yeah, yeah it is. W- w- where would you place it then? What do you think as a safe spot for it? I mean, I, I would I would have it right down under the BCAAs, right down at, down at F. Because it's just the amount of good food you could buy for the cost of AG1. Yeah. That is much oh, I'm more so excited nutritious. To see the comments. Yeah. So, yeah. If you're if you're taking AG one, like, just like spend your money somewhere else. That's such a lot of money that you could be way better spent on real food that will do you m- much more good. That was kind of my impression as well. I was thinking, like, for me, I'd rather spend that money on <laughs> Red Bull. Our next. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, Red Bull's like sugar water. It's a lot of energy with very little nutrition. Apart from the taurine, the tor- taurine is quite quite good. <laughs> all sugary drinks and like energy rich food like that, it's all displacing f- food in your diet. You know, you're you're going to eat two thousand to three thousand calories in a day, whatever your size is and your activity level is. Um, you've got a certain calorie budget if you like, and if if you displace nutritious food with nutrient poor food like Red Bull which is just pure sugar then it leaves less room for the nutrient dense food and so that's when okay. you get into that's how you get into the problem of where people need to supplement it's like they're they eat let's say the bread and Red Bull <laughs> yeah I was going to say you're talking about me but <laughs> go, go bread and Red Bull and bagels yeah so let's say you have 15, 1500 calories of bread and Red Bull so you've got <laughs> Like a lot of energy and almost no nutrition. So then you need to get into supplementing protein and supplementing AG1 and or a, or a much cheaper multivitamin or whatever. Um, and then you get your blood test back and you, you show that you're low in magnesium and you're low in B12 and you're low in vitamin you're pre-diabetic. D. Pre-diabetic. Yeah. yeah. So skip all that <laughs> and just eat steak and eggs. I take it you put Red Bull somewhere. Oh, yeah. Right at, right at the bottom. As low as we can go, really. <laughs> I'll put it a little below AG like half <laughs> like that. <laughs> um, I I had done uh, so for AG one, I put it in B. I thought you were gonna be like, yeah, it's pretty good, but um, next to the plant protein, yeah. this is kind of my my hippie tier B. It's like if you want like all greens, mm-hmm. no <laughs> no animal products, but not quite as good. Yeah, and I reckon for, if if AG one was one tenth of the price that it actually is then it could have gone up into D. <laughs> I love that jump. A ten, if it was 10 times better, it moves up to D tier. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, well, uh, we got the, the next one. This is another one. I, I, obviously, I keep saying this. I'm super interested in your opinions on these. This is another one I was very, very interested in creatine yeah yeah okay so that's the hardest one i would say um oh wow where i'm going to be really vague (laughs) (laughs) so creatine creatine is one of a very very short list of sports supplements that has an excellent base of research showing that it definitely has positive effects for many athletes across different sports so it's definitely an effective supplement it can help people build more muscle in certain contexts. It can help. But the, its main effect is it allows you to do more training. Um, and, the, and then it's the, the, the training that really gives you the benefit. So it facilitates gains, if you like. 
um, from training. One of the lesser known things that creatine is, has good research behind is its uh, cognitive effects. It has really good evidence for positive effects on uh, memory, on mood, on really? cognitive performance. Uh, I shared a study on my Instagram recently um, on creatine that had just come out showing that a large dose of creatine could rescue some of the cognitive deficits caused by sleep deprivation acutely. I don't supplement creatine myself. Uh, however, it's one of the supplements which I've been on the fence about for some time and I'm still on the fence about. Um, I, I do eat a lot of red meat, so I probably get a decent amount of creatine in my diet, but it's not going to be as much as like a five gram a day supplement. So if you're vegetarian uh, or vegan, then a creatine supplement is probably a very good idea. And I would I would take it. It would definitely have to go up into S. <laughs> but <Wow. laughs> if, if you eat lots of red meat, then ooh, I don't know. That would drag it down because there is this this potential downside of um, adding a little bit of extra water weight to muscle. Uh, notwithstanding that, I, I I don't really I don't really know what the net benefit of of creatine would be to to most climbers. It may be yeah. a benefit. It may have some downsides which partially or completely offset benefits. So th there's probably some optimal dose, and I don't know what that is, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely the weight gain side. I, I just started taking creatine like two-ish months ago um, just to see how it felt. I definitely noticed uh, feeling, I guess, stronger, uh, which could be completely just mental. But yeah. I also have gained, I gained 10 pounds. Almost. 10 pounds, that's quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. And what's your yeah, creatine like, dose? Uh, the Whatever it says on the, I think it's like five grams. Five grams, or like yeah. That. Yeah, so I, I, I'm unsure. I would I would I would put that somewhere near the top, but I, I don't even I don't even know if where where exactly to put it. It's just a, a vague. We could do uh like you said, like S for vegetarian, B for everyone else, so maybe exactly. A. Yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds fair to me, yeah. All right. That's that's better than I thought you would put it. Uh I wasn't hundred percent sure because I know it's a it's an odd supplement that has a lot of different views on it i believe i put it in a tier so uh, yeah, that's the that's first one i think we've been exactly yeah. the same, same one, one. I, I think i think you could make a, a good argument for it being uh, right right up at the top as well so yeah that's fine <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts <laughs> um i honestly I, I i have never given it any thought really uh whether would be of any benefit whatsoever i really don't know i have no clue i don't i don't know i'm <laughs> totally actually, stumped uh, so i think most people would be surprised but i don't i don't smoke at all so no uh yeah, yeah i wouldn't know either i know some athletes use it, especially i guess in climbing or at least in the u.s climbers a lot a lot of them yeah like to smoke um i mean possibly uh one of the main uses for marijuana is is um for relief from anxiety uh, so if you're about to free solo in eight C, yeah, I don't know if I would be doing any doing anything mind mind altering before doing that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that might make you more anxious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, you know, sometimes things that can take the edge off anxiety c could be beneficial for some people. But again, I would probably rather try at least try, even if it's not always achievable, to get back to the root cause of that and solve that problem at root. Diet, right? <laughs> so my mom always says, she's like, you're, it's probably because you're not eating, you're eating too much bread, that's why you're anxious. <laughs> <All right, mom. laughs> the next one, pre-workout. Uh, yeah, what do you think? Well, pre-workout could could contain anything. I mean, I, I don't consume any pre-workout mix of any type myself, um, but as I, as I understand, Pre-workout supplements can contain all sorts of things from uh, protein to carbohydrate to stimulants. They often would have lots of caffeine. So it would depend on the exact product. When it comes to uh, energy, like, you know, to have carbs, well, 
that is a big problem for many athletes and it was for me for a long time that's partly why I ended up uh, switching to a primarily low carb diet most of the time because I, I, I just felt like I was on an energy roller coaster and I definitely did need to make sure I took a dose of of, uh, of carbs <laughs> right before training probably during training and then after yeah. training as well yeah. um, and if I if I got the timing of that wrong then I would have a bit of a crash and um, you know I would, I would for me it's a, like an IV drip like I need something constantly. Like if I'm at the gym, I'm sipping Red Bull. I'm a big si- like I opened this like two hours ago. I just sip stuff, but it's just constant. And then when this runs out, I'll like be eating something, and then like that. And it's like I just otherwise I just again yeah. this is something that's going to displace nutrient density in your diet, and I think that is possibly storing up bigger problems down the line. So would you put it with Red Bull? Do you think or? better probably yeah yeah because it is just going to it's likely to be it's likely to be just energy depending on the protein if it if it's got a decent amount of protein it could go above red bull all right we could put it in just in f or in d yeah um, the very bottom of d yeah okay. something like that we'll yeah do like that sounds good oh right, well, i won't keep you much longer i want to show you this uh, this last one before we end the video go we'll on final opinion um cocaine Cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, given that I'm from Glasgow, and I dare say, like, uh, I've been around like uh, the culture of of drug taking <laughs> a little bit. Um, not not directly, I'm, I should say, but um, uh, I've never taken cocaine myself. Um, I don't think it's a great idea. <laughs> No, there's a good <laughs> habit for climbing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to do your performance much good. Um, and it may cause you significant problems in the rest of your life as well. <laughs> <laughs> Might so, be good the first time and then <laughs> things just go downhill. Definitely on the definitely on the avoid list, I would say. Hopefully so better or worse than Red Bull? Uh, worse, even worse than Red Bull. Red Bull oh is my definitely, gosh. definitely so benign. This just goes- yeah. <laughs> Red Bull is definitely benign in comparison. <laughs> that so was quite a had, polarized list. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I had had uh, where is it? Cocaine. <laughs> my idea <laughs> was that if you were doing BCAAs, steroids, and coke, <laughs> you would be the greatest climber of all time. <laughs> you might, you lovely. might, you might briefly feel like the greatest climber of all time. <laughs> <laughs> or what if you're already like in that top running, and then you just do all these at once <laughs> and somehow don't have a heart attack like if Tomoa showed up to the world championship did hgh and cocaine i mean he would he, he already wins i don't think he would need to but <laughs> possibly for a possibly for a short a short time uh but <laughs> i wouldn't be placing my bets on it on uh, the long the longevity of any athlete taking those the ones at the top there. <laughs> <laughs> top list it's a little dangerous it's high risk high reward yeah well i think uh we can agree your list seems a, a little more professionally done uh this is actually pretty similar to what i thought i i will say i was happy that way was as high as it was yeah. i didn't nope. know for sure but i wanted to get your opinion on it because i thought you might have some secret stuff i didn't know about how way caused mm. heart conditions or something weird like that and i was going to have to throw it all away so and interestingly we we never got to either of the two supplements that i take Really? Okay. Well, before we end it, then I have to hear what these are. I'm so interested. <laughs> well, the the most important one is vitamin D, which is quite difficult to get in sufficient quantity from your diet, even if you eat a lot of animal foods like I do. Um, so, well, I mean, you can get obviously get it from the sun uh, if you're out in the sun quite a lot and if you live in a country with plenty of sun. But if you sit behind a computer most of the time and then go to the climbing wall, then possibly even if you live in a sunny country, then your vitamin D might be on the low side and it's worthwhile getting a blood test to to verify that. And the benefits of vitamin... I mean, vitamin D is really a steroid hormone in the body and its, really? its effects are almost, almost anything to do with health or performance that you can name, vitamin D impacts it. I don't even need a blood test. I know I don't get enough vitamin D, so... But what is your number two? The number two is... Uh, fish oil but specifically uh, the long chain omega-3 fats that are in fish oil which is 
DHA and EPA. The one that I skipped. Ah, okay. Yeah, good stuff. Now, I wouldn't take it except I have a fish allergy, so I can't eat any seafood. Um, if I didn't have a fish allergy, I would just eat salmon every week. Um, and I would get okay. my long chain omega 3s from salmon or other uh, foods like sardines or mackerel or things like that. It's really interesting your, your, your philosophy of getting everything as naturally as possible and only supplementing. Like you said, you're both your supplements you take are extremely like well thought out where it's like, I cannot eat fish, so I'll supplement fish oil. And we, I assume a lot of the vitamin D issues because you live in UK and I know there's not a lot of, yeah. a lot of sunshine. <laughs> so it's like, I also need, yeah, that, that's a really good way to look at it. I might try to adopt that a bit because I supplement mostly just whey and creatine, mm. but. Eggs, red meat and, and salmon are three of the best foods that you can buy really. And uh, yes. <laughs> if you if you just if you just eat those, then um, and and get and get outside in the sun, then for most people, um, th there's not there's no supplements that would automatically be needed. There are some, you know, there are some individual differences. People have inborn errors of metabolism that means that they they may end up deficient or low in a certain nutrient because of genetic reasons. But taking those to one side. If you eat a good diet, then no supplements should be necessary, even for maximizing sport performance, I would say. Thank you guys for watching. I really yeah, had a good time <laughs> filming with Dave. It was pretty cool to see his opinion. I think our lists differed a little bit. Here is my completed list. I, I personally think mine is the ideal list, but for those of you that want to look at a more, I guess, uh, professional list made by somebody who knows what they're talking about, here's Dave's completed tier list, the ultimate tier list of climbing supplements. Remember to click the link in the description if you want to try out Dave's course for free, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.